Welcome to another free tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. In today's tip, we're going to discuss the table schema, in other words, the layout of the tables, how you'd set them up, for handling a parts inventory database. I received an email from one of my students asking how best to set up his parts inventory database. Now, he has a need to track parts that his business works with, in addition to tracking unique items that have individual serial numbers. And he wants to know the best way to set this up. Part of the list of qualifications that he gave me is that a part may or may not have a serial number, may or may not have an expiration date, may have one or more suppliers, may have one or more alternate part numbers, must have a condition like new, repaired, overhaul, etc., must have a reorder level, a target level for inventory purposes, and I'm going to assume a quantity on hand as well. He goes on to say, my thought is that I need a line item for each part dependent on quantity. So if he has five valves with the same part number, the same valve, but with different serial numbers, so five unique items and or expiration dates, I would need five records, line items, and, and he is correct. Now, as you know, this would not be a very efficient database with many thousands of parts, and getting the quantity on hand could take a long time, and that is true. Unfortunately, once you have to store serial numbers for unique items, at that point, you are going to need a record in your database for each specific item. So if you carry a particular valve, and it's one part number, but you've got 5,000 of them in your warehouse, and you need to track each one of those guys, then you need, tr need 5,000 records in your database. So here's how I recommend setting up the tables. First, you need a part table, part T. It'll have a part ID, a reorder level, and a target level. This tracks the general part. What part is it? Not what individual unit are we talking about. We will need a supplier table, so we know which supplier supplies this particular part. Now we need a way to merge them together. Since you can have the parts purchased from multiple suppliers and multiple suppliers providing parts, we need a many-to-many -many relationship, many parts, many suppliers, with a junction table. I call this junction table part X supplier T. It's a table that mixes parts with suppliers. So one particular valve, let's call it valve A, can be purchased from five different suppliers. Each one of those may have a different part number that is supplied by the supplier or the vendor. All right, so your valve A might be valve 46243 from this supplier and 84234 from another supplier, and that's how you can keep track of those. But in your database, it's all the same part. Now, this type of relationship is called a many-to-many -many relationship, and I've got a few tutorials on my website, including a free tip video that explains how to set up a many-to-many -many relationship if you've never seen it before. It involves three tables. You've got table one, table two, and then a junction table between them that tracks the relationship. Just go to that link right there, 599cd.com slash XACM2M, and you'll see a bunch of resources on many-to-many -many relationships. I'll also post a link in the description box below the video. All right, so we've got our parts and suppliers taken care of and the unique part numbers that come from each supplier. What about the individual items themselves with the serial numbers and the expiration dates? Well, for that, we're going to need a unit table. The part is the part type, right, valve A. The unit table tracks all of the individual units of valve A that you have on your shelves. So for each record in part T you'll have one or more records in unit T. That's a simple one-to-many relationship. The unit ID is that individual unit's primary key. The part ID is what part it is, valve A. It may or may not have a serial number according to the customer specifications. So if you have a serial number, put it in there. And if not, leave it blank. And then, of course, an expiration date and any other properties of that specific unit. Now, my student mentioned to me that tracking the quantity on hand can get out of hand. It can get to be a big calculation, especially if you have thousands of different parts 
and each of those parts may have tens or hundreds of different units. So you can try calculating them on the fly. Depending on the size of your database and the speed of your computer, it might not be that bad. It might just take a few moments for it to calculate that quantity on hand, and you can only put it in the places where you really need to see it. However, if it is taking forever, what you can do is you can actually track the quantity on hand right inside your part table. Put a quantity on hand field in the part table. Now, you are responsible for updating that quantity on hand field. So whenever you take a unit out of inventory, you need to subtract a value from that field. I generally tend to do that when the user puts an item on an order. When the item is added, then I will use some code to subtract a value from that table. And likewise, if they cancel an order or remove an item, you have to subtract it from that as well. Now, how do you do that? There's a couple different ways you can do it, but generally it's going to involve some kind of a program. You can either use a macro or some VBA code, but you're going to have to use event programming. I personally like VBA code and something called record sets. It allows you to programmatically control values in tables using VBA code. Now, this is a more advanced concept. I've got a whole series of classes, about 10 classes on my website, that covers inventory control. You can find them at this link here, 599c.com slash XACINV, as an in inventory. It will show you how to set up and maintain pretty much everything that I've mentioned in this free tip video so far, and a lot more. So if you want to learn more about how to do this, check out that link. So that is how I would set up the tables for a parts inventory database. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them. And if not, I hope you learned something today.